Hi, I'm Phyllis from Soul in the Dull Corner, and welcome back to my channel. And today, and let's sit over again. Hi, I'm Phyllis from Soul in the Doll Corner, and welcome back to my channel. And today, I've been playing around with my machine with my stitches, and I thought I would make a table topper. And so I'm going to do a one in miniature, and I'll show you the one that I made. It's not perfect, but it's a great idea, and it just needs, I just need to do it again and iron out a few of the little wrinkles that I didn't. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you. I start off with a piece of fabric here, and I cut it in a circle, but not exactly perfect, not a complete round, just, but you could use a square, just whatever. And I put a piece of muslin behind it. And I use, I fold it in half and then in quarters. And I find the center point. And then when I have my center point, I put a thumbtack, turn it upside down, put some tape over it, and line it up with my needle. Right across, right in line with my needle that way. And you can move it out to whatever distance. I can use about a 12 inch circle, which is 24 inches with this machine kind of keeping it flat. I haven't got this quite right this morning, but anyway, and then I take my center mark and I put it over that I put it over right in the center of my square and I run a basting thread around here first and I was just a little bit off here I wasn't quite so then I moved my needle to the left it was in the center I moved it to the left and I was able to complete a circle now I will trim this all off but it's just for demonstration and then I picked the stitch that I want and there's really no tell, point in me telling you my numbers on my machine because yours will be different. But whatever design you decide to go with, I'll find my foot feed down here. And then I want to keep this taut as I sew. And as you see, this will make, you can see how my feed dogs is bringing this around. And if I can keep this tight, it's going to, it should come out exactly the same spot. The only thing is sometimes your pattern doesn't come out exactly right. But usually it can, it blends in pretty well. You see, I just got my fingernails sort of, and I just sort of make sure this doesn't pop off here.
It's amazing how it'll, if you've kept it taut all the way around, it'll just, it'll come out right on. Now watch this time, it won't, but. <laughs> and as I said, I could do a 12 inch, or 24 inch circle with no problem. I made a topper and it's, about 36 so or it's about 30 I think I had a little trouble with it because I was back over here on my machine on the table and it didn't just work out 100% oops wouldn't you know it I ran out of thread in my bobbin Well, let's see. It's not the right color, but it'll do. Well, as you can see, hopefully we'll see what we can do here, how close we'll get. You want to make sure your bobbin's full when you start. And then you don't do silly things like this. But I was kind of lucky it's not going to show up too badly. It's just kind of fun to, we have all these nice stitches on our machines and we never use them. Oh, I didn't go quite, quite far enough. But anyway, you can see, and this is where I ran out of my bobbin. So it matched up. I was really fortunate. <laughs> But it's kind of fun and you see with this one I made the second round you can make as many rounds of pattern this looks nice with reversed and I'll show you and then I will take and I'll just hem this but this is the table topper I made and to, to get my points down here I fold it in quarters and then in eighths that be right yeah and then I folded them again and this is point I fold it this point so I had these points I pressed I just you can see a crease mark here where I drew the line so I went up two and a half inches I think from here and an inch here and then joined joined it and I run a basing thread around my line so I'd have something solid to to uh 
work with, work on. And then for here, if I had had an embroidery machine, I might have embroidered some little thing here. But I had some lace that I just put, cut the little flower out and put on. I don't know whether you can see how much you can see on this, but and then in the center I had made a small one practice run, and this is what I did. Just put that on top to see what it would look like. So it's and I put the muslin behind it, and that gives me a stabilizer. So I hope this gives you some ideas on how to uh, to make. different things with your stitches. Now I cut, I had a little piece of lace here. And you see, I could put a nice little piece of lace around the bottom here as well. But it's, it's a fun thing to do. It gives you some practice sewing different lines. And something, a tip I want to give you. Have you ever watched curling? Probably in Riverhead Television in some places. But anyway, curling is a ice sport. And they get on the ice and they throw these rocks to the other end. And they hit, they try to hit the opponent's rock off the, the circle. And when they, th before they throw their rock, they point, they look exactly where they want to, the rock to end up. And they never take their eyes off that point until after they've thrown their rock and it's about halfway down the ice. And they know exactly where they're going to throw it. It's amazing. What I want to tell you, if you're sewing, you look where you want to go. Look at that point and sew, and you'll come out straight to that point. So just watch. Try it sometime on a piece of material. Just Put your, you start your, your needle off where you want to start and then look at the point down here and you will end up with a straight line. Let's see, can I demonstrate it for you? Okay, I'll just go to back to... Now, see, I want to go here. See? That's really straight. And I wasn't even looking at it half time. So we'll try that again. I want to go to here. See? Amazing. So never watch your needle. Watch where you want to go. And you'll draw you'll sew straight lines. Please subscribe and share, share, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Bye now.